Hey, how are you? Hope everything is going well. My name is Jeremy. I'm going to be uh, ultimately doing a, a reading from the book by Joel Osteen, The Power of Favor. More than halfway through, I think we're down to the last quarter mile on this one, too. Uh, quarter mile, 400 meters. Most tracks are 400 meters. They're back in the old day, you might say 440 yards. Four laps is one mile. Twelve laps and two hundred more meters. Half a lap is a five k. So cool. Think about that. You pray for knowledge and wisdom, and there it is. You'll need it one day. <laughs> when you're just sitting around the lanai, just talking about working out. Did you know one track is four hundred meters around? Did you know four laps is sixteen hundred meters, which is one mile? <laughs> pretty cool stuff the power of favor we have favor with God having favor with somebody is super super important I hope people show uh, favoritism to some people because they love them so much and care for them or because <laughs> they're in debt to them even though the person probably said bro you don't owe me nothing just uh, lay down your life and uh, Lay down your life and follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. So that's all Jesus asked, pretty much. All right? So cool. The power of favor. I hope you had an opportunity to serve people today using your gifts and talents. Just serve people in whatever way that you get to do that. Uh, whether it's uh, <laughs> at a Publix or it's uh, in a hospital, wherever it's at, or law enforcement or in the government. Uh, that you got an opportunity to serve people and even in all those arenas and those atmospheres environments that you got to love people and they saw that you stood out yes even it might be a very serious professional job uh, but you could still have fun and you can especially always still love people whether you're law enforcement or corrections officer God will use you right where you are at. Let's see what Joel says about the power of favor. The title is astonishing. Uh, should be cool. I love the fact that even though this crippled man had low expectations, even though all he was expecting was a few coins, God didn't say too bad. He was waiting at the gates and Peter and whoever passed by and the guys asking for coins, but Peter didn't have any coins, neither did his friend. Uh, so he pretty much just healed him right there. He told him, what, this is what I do have for you. And uh, healed him and uh, he was healed. He wasn't crippled anymore. Too bad. I had something much better, but you don't have enough faith. I was going to bring you healing, but you're not expecting enough. God is so merciful. Even when we don't have the faith, even when we think we've reached our limit, God says, that's okay. I'm going to show you favor in spite of that. The scripture says, when we have faith the size of a mustard seed, nothing is impossible. A mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds. God could have said, if you have great faith, if you never doubt and never get discouraged, I'll do something big. But God knows there will be times when we don't have the faith we need to reach our destinies. So he says, if you have just a little bit of faith, that's all you need. Then I'll show up and exceed your expectations. The fact that you're reading this tells me that at least you have a mustard seed of faith. That means you have the faith you need for God to show out in your life. You have the faith for God to catapult you to new levels. But, as with this man, you may feel that you're stuck doing the same thing. You have some kind of disadvantage. Now you're expecting a few coins, so to speak. Expecting the ordinary. That's where that man was, yet God showed up and did the extraordinary. You may have a good reason to settle where you are, but God loves you too much to let you miss your destiny. It may seem like just another ordinary day, the same old thing. Everything looks routine. No, get ready. God is about to show up and do something unusual, something that you haven't seen. He's going to exceed your expectations. When the people in the temple saw the crippled man now healed, the scripture says they were astonished. Ah, what God is about to do in your life is going to cause people to look at you in astonishment. They're going to say, how could you be so blessed? I know where you came from. 
How could you be free when so many around you are addicted? How could you be so strong, so healthy, so energetic? The medical report said you weren't going to get well. God is going to make you an example of His goodness. When He exceeds your expectations, people are going to take notice. They're going to see the favor on your life. They're going to be astonished. Cool. The power of favor. Having favor with God, the goodness of God. He is going to blow your mind and want to show off. But He's going to test your faith too and your strength. All right? So that's why when you do works, the good works, of course, the faith is first. But then there's the good deeds, the good works. But faith is uh, most, 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 most important. But uh, uh, where they say, what is faith without good works? But um, <laughs> so whatever it is that you do, do it well. Do it to the glory of God, the Bible says. So whatever it may be from the lowest to the highest, all right? There's some things Holy Spirit will give you discernment that you should not be doing, so don't be doing that stuff if you're, uh, if you're enabling somebody to uh, do something like I would say uh, bartenders or eventually uh, bartenders. <laughs> Did I say bartenders twice? Or fast food joints. Uh, but people do have free will. They have free will to decide. They have choices. When you get the Holy Spirit in you, when you realize you have the temple of the Holy Spirit, you make some very wise choices because you're led and you pray about it. God, you still want me going to these fast food joints and to these restaurants because I know it's not helping this temple. Or maybe, oh, it is. It's just fuel. No, it's not helping your temple. It's not making you feel good, be healthy, beating the medical report, glorifying God. So uh, you would ask to be delivered from any addictions. Yep. <laughs> So that's, that's one reason. Uh, bartenders or fast foods or, uh, yeah, just things you shouldn't have if you know your medical report isn't where it needs to be. Uh, God set a pretty high standard with His Son, uh, Jesus Christ, being perfect, living the perfect sinless life. Uh, but He did that so He could be the perfect sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> the perfect sacrifice uh, for our sins. To take it all the way. His body broken for us, his blood poured out for us to cleanse us of every sin that we've ever done. All those temptations, all those addictions, and all those wrongdoings, all those abusive situations, uh, gone. Totally gone. And he loves you. So cool. Remembering that. Hmm. Pray for God to move wherever you're at. Pray for him to move, to be there. Because if you haven't experienced the love of God, the, the fall on your face, uh, I would hope fall on your knees first and then maybe fall on your face. <laughs> or you have friends around there to, to catch you. That type of love. Uh, the chills when you think about it, love, about how much he loves you. Because he wants, he wants, he wants you and he wants all of you. He wants to fill your heart, fill you, and then use you. He wants you to feel that love. This is going to blow you away. <laughs> a lot of songs came on today. Uh, I play play music at the gym and on the way home in the car. And uh, some 80s, 70s, 80s music. My dad was big time into music. Some of the songs um, are specifically songs that he likes and I remember him playing. So in a way, he's talking to you. God's always talking to us. My dad's talking to us, so I, I wondered, he started to get it towards the end, probably the last year, the whole uh, salvation in Christ and the love of God thing, the freedom and the joy and the excitement and the peace and the comfort, he started to get it, he started to get it because Jesus used me, God used me to be the light where I was at and to show love, so he wants to fill your heart too. He wants to blow your mind. He has been waiting, waiting, waiting for you. He is choosing you. You know, we don't choose him. He'll choose you. All right? And then he'll put it on your heart to surrender because you know you're being pursued. You've heard his voice. You've heard the enemy's voice. You know it's God. You've got people coming around saying, you need to go to church, bro. You need to go to church, sister. You need to go get your mom and your dad and your kids. And you guys need to show up here because God's going to show up. He's going to show up in this place and he's going to blow your mind. And he's going to give you that overwhelming feeling of love that you've never felt before that you're just going to fall flat. 
you're going to be done. And you're going to want to always feel that feeling again. No addictions, no drugs, no alcohol, no beachfront houses, no jets, helicopters, fast boats, women, men, cats, cool dogs can ever fulfill that feeling of the love of God. Ever. Nothing. And that you're going to want all the time. It's an addiction. Addicted to Jesus? I don't know if that's bad. Addicted to love. I think there's a song called that. But this is agape love. The love from God. Addicted to love. <laughs> Something came to my head when I was thinking about all those songs of my dad and how I was trying to tell him it's hard to witness to your um, hard-hearted father that doesn't understand the, the greatness of God or the love of God, but um, this phrase came to my head. It was, I told you so, because I believe he's in heaven looking down and uh, making, he's talking with God, walking with Jesus and uh, trying to get my attention, but I... All I would say, Dad, I told you so, right? That's why you gotta go tell all your friends. I did. I told all your friends at the funeral. I did. Hopefully they received it. Pastor Dave did too. But I told you so. It's better than expected. Way better. Heaven is awesome. And that's why we're doing this here. We're guaranteed eternal life when we surrender our life to God. Guaranteed. We can't lose that. Isn't that awesome? No matter what you do after the sins you commit, just continually repent, repent, and give it to God if you have a major problem. If you have a major problem, if you need deliverance, you need to find the right people, the right church, the right pastors, the right group to deliver you from that stuff. Because Christians don't need to be sinning anymore. They need to be delivered within the first six months, I would hope, after they receive Christ and get baptized and they get delivered uh, from some of these strongholds, some of these addictions, some of these really bad habits that do not glorify or honor God, that are not wholly righteous. So you need to be delivered from stuff. Um, God is ready to deliver you. All right? Cool. Hmm. There's so much more. The greatness of God, the love of God, and He wants to move in this place all around in every heart, every heart to be open, open to God. He wants every heart to be open. Love ya. See ya. Bye. Let's see.